All right, we'll give it a couple seconds to let some more people come in and then we'll get started. All right, so my name's Teresa and I am the host for today's uh, virtual college exploration with the University of Tennessee. And I wanna welcome all you students. Please know that um, we do have a Q&A button that you are able to type in some questions and our rep from the University of Tennessee will be happy to answer those for you. And we also wanna remind you that your camera and microphone are set for off. So we will not be able to see you or hear you. However, we, would, we welcome any questions that you may have. Make sure you sign up for any other sessions that you're interested in by going to oacac.org. And know that this recording is being, this session is being recorded and you will be able to view it later in about a week's time at oacac.org. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our presenter for the day. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Come on in. We got plenty of room in the uh, in the virtual chat room. Like she mentioned before, if you guys have any questions about anything, I already got it pulled up. I'll keep an eye on it, and I'm just going to kind of answer them as we go. Um, my name is Will. I am the official counselor for the state of Ohio for the uh, University of Tennessee. Proud to be here. I know I'll probably I don't know how many of you guys really have a connection to the University of Tennessee. If you've ever been down there, if you've been through it, if, if you've ever visited Knoxville, I know a lot of times people uh, kind of stop by when they're heading down to the Great Smoky Mountains, going on vacation down in Florida. So we're right there. A lot of you guys know we're right off I-75, so we are not too far out of your way. We've got some great information here tonight. We've got some big changes happening this year, so I'm gonna walk through everything. Like I said, if you've got a question, just let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen and you'll know when I'm doing that because not only will you see my screen, but you'll see I will turn bright orange with the pride of Tennessee. There we go, look at this bad boy. Bring it on, boom. I look like a giant Cheeto, isn't that awesome? All right, so we'll go ahead and dive right on in. First thing we wanna talk about is the university. Let's talk about the numbers and my favorite number to talk about on here is actually down at the very bottom, 24,000 undergrad students at the University of Tennessee. Now we are a national brand known all over, you know, at D1 school and R1 school. Everybody knows about the University of Tennessee. So you just assume we're gonna be like this mammoth school that's like 50,000 plus students, not the case. 24,000 undergrad students at the university. So you see, we're not gonna be one of those schools where you just get lost in the crowd, but we're also not high school part two. You know, you're gonna come in, if we're poor, we're just right. That's how I like to say it. Because of that uh, class size, you'll actually see our student to faculty ratio only 17 to one. So you actually really get to know your professors. You get to know people in the classrooms with you. It's not gonna be lost with like 600 people in a giant auditorium, but almost like you're in a football stadium just trying to learn about math. Don't have to worry about stuff like that. Another number on here I love to see is that 89%. 89% of our students receive financial aid and scholarships. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say that college is really expensive. So anything that we can do to kind of help lighten that load, to make that burden a little bit easier to carry, you know, like worrying about like taking out a bunch of loans. I love this. I love that we're so much financial aid and scholarships are on the table for our students. 84% of our students also graduate and get into their career or go right into grad school as soon as they graduate. That is awesome. So you're not just gonna be like, hey, I got my bachelor's degree, time to go work at GameStop or Subway or Walmart or something. You're getting in, you're progressing your career and that's what we're here to do. You see, we have 360 undergraduate programs of study. Let's talk a little bit about the campus. Um, we are the flagship institution for the state of Tennessee. Not a lot of places can claim that they're the flagship and also the land grant university for their state. Tennessee absolutely can. We're also an R1 Carnegie Distinction School. That means we are a top tier research facility. So you part R1 with a D1 school for athletics. Hardly any schools can claim that. We absolutely can. I mentioned before the D1 athletics, 910 acres on our campus, absolutely beautiful. We've got a lot of virtual visits going on right now that if you haven't seen the campus, you should definitely log on and check it out. Or better yet, come down and see it in person. We'll talk more about how to do that in a minute. 
Let's actually break down the university though, because the University of Tennessee is made up of several different colleges and they're all listed here. They all have their majors in the subgroups of that. So you'll actually see our undergraduate programs there, you know, in our College of Agriculture, you know, animal science, wildlife and fishery sciences, architecture and design. There's graphic design, interior architecture, the College of Arts and Sciences, Anthropology, Neuroscience, the School of Music, the Haslam College of Business, one of the colleges that we're very well known for, Business Analytics and, St and Statistics, that's always a tricky one to say, Supply Chain Management, we're actually number five. We're the fifth ranked, ranked program in the nation for supply chain management and marketing also fantastic. The College of Communication and Information, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. That's where your journalism, electronic media, public relations. College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, Audiology, Speech Pathology, Hospitality and Tour Tourism Management. Also got to talk about our education majors if you're interested in that. You can actually get your bachelor's and your master's in five years because your senior year, we're going to go ahead and get you some master courses. The Tickle College of Engineering, perhaps my favorite college to say out loud, is absolutely phenomenal. One of the uh, programs that we're known for nation, actually worldwide, it's your aerospace, biomedical, computer, nuclear engineering. Talk more about that. The College of Nursing, probably our most competitive program, honestly, at the University of Tennessee and then the College of Social Work mention the competitive nature of it. These are the ones that are very competitive. These are ones that have a little additional steps for you to apply for if you want to get into these programs. The College of Architecture and Design, College of Nursing, like I said, very competitive. The Tickle College of Engineering, they even have their own algorithm of how to be accepted. It's like your GPA plus 25 with an ACT score times, I don't know, carry the two. That's how you actually get your rating for something called an SPI. That's a Success Predictor Indicator. And that's once you pass that, you can be accepted into the engineering school. Pre-pharmacy direct admit. School of Music. It's kind of like, which one of these are not like the other? The School of Music, very competitive program. Absolutely phenomenal here at the University of Tennessee talking about the student experience because it's not all about what's going on in the classroom. It's about what you can do when you're outside of the classroom. That's kind of really what college is. Um, I mentioned before, you know, 84% of our students going right into their career or into uh, grad programs. That's a big deal because that's all because of our center of career development, which is fantastic. It's a resource you can always use. Living on campus is just beautiful. And you, your freshman year at the University of Tennessee, you do live on campus. Now that's for one year, then you can move off of campus if you want to, or you can keep your whole career on the campus. We have 14 different residence halls with different styles. Living learning communities. These are, you know, if, you, if you're in a certain major, like an engineering student, you're probably gonna be in an LLC, a living learning community with other engineering students. So you have like the same schedule, the same type of, you know, class structure, you know, you're all studying for the same test that they come up, you're waking up at the same time. So you're kind of, you know, really plugging in well. We also have LLCs for, you know, hobbies or interests. Maybe you're a huge hiker. You love to go hiking, love to be outdoors. It's actually one of the big reasons why you decided to come to Tennessee. Well, you can be with other people who love to do that. Other crazy folks who love to wake up at 3 a.m. to go hiking, stuff like that. That's what the living learning communities are. So it's a great way to plug in because we really believe, as it says on here, about making a big campus feel smaller. If you go to a small school, there's not a lot you can do to make it feel really big. But if you go to a big school, there's a lot of opportunities to make it feel smaller, more cozy, comfortable. And that's what these communities are. We have 600 plus clubs and organizations at the University of Tennessee. If you have a hobby or an interest, I can almost guarantee you we have a club for you already. And they can be anything and everything. Uh, I know there's there's a Quidditch team on campus. So if you like Quidditch, there you go. I mean, like what? Like the sleeping club. You love to sleep in? There's a club for you. They cover everything. And if, we have a, if you have an interest and we don't have a club for it, work with our student life organizations. We'll kind of get that ball rolling. Intramurals and club sports. So when we're talking about like, you know, athletics and sporting, you know, top tier D1 SEC scholarship level athletes, right below that club sports. That's where you represent the school. You travel, you play other schools. Uh, and then intramurals. That's just what you play with your friends. That's just among the student body. That's like on a Tuesday night, you got done eating dinner. You're like, let's go do something. Let's go play Red Rover out in the quad. We got a league going. We can go out there, you know, 18, 19 year olds just clotheslining people at full speed. It's awesome. Um, we have full Greek life. We have sorority and fraternities here on our campus. They have their own little villages on the campus too. So if that's an interest for you, absolutely available. Study abroad is 
something I cannot recommend highly enough. When I was in college, I studied abroad and I got to live in Scotland for a full summer and it was the coolest thing I ever did. And I, I miss it every day. And I always encourage people that this is something you have an interest in, absolutely check that out. See if you can get in there and do some study abroad. We're in 50 plus countries and you can say as short as two weeks, all the way up to a full academic year. So it's a great way to really observe another culture and really dive into what you're interested in, what you wanna study. Talking a little bit about Tennessee traditions coming up. We are a very rich traditional school. You know, we've been around for a long time. Uh, it's not like we just popped up two weeks ago. We've got a lot of great traditions. Um, you see Smokey, that's our blue tick coon hound. He is the mascot for the school. Always has been, always will be. You know, football, of course, everybody knows about the volunteer football team. Absolutely a tradition, you know, the orange checkerboard end zones that we have there. Our stadium is right on the river. We're only one of three universities in the country that actually have their football stadium on the riverfront, which are a tradition for people to bring their boats and to kind of tailgate on the river. It's called the Vol Navy, and that's like a bucket list item for me to be able to do that. So you've got that rock. You can paint the rock as a student. Anything you want to do, if you have a message, if you have some art you want to display, get out there, get involved with it. Big Orange Fridays, I love it. Every Friday we get decked out in our orange and we really show our school spirit tons of fun stuff so now i can't talk about the university of tennessee without talking about knoxville tennessee because they are connected at the hip the university kind of bleeds directly into downtown knoxville they're like across the street from each other and knoxville is a fantastic city you know it's kind of ingrained in its DNA to be outdoorsy. It's very nature driven. Like I said, you know, we got the, oh, the Tennessee River coming right in front of campus. We got the Great Smoky Mountains. America, the number one, I believe, attended or most popular national park in the country is less than 30 minutes away with over 800 miles of hiking, which is way too much hiking for me. Uh, we have 112 miles of Greenway. The cool thing they've done in Knoxville is they've actually converted a lot of you know like forestries and wilderness quarries things that weren't being used into an urban wilderness so you don't really have to drive anywhere if you want to get outside and explore if you want to go paddle boarding kayaking hiking biking climbing it's all there in knoxville it's fantastic it's absolutely gorgeous like i said it's like a part of the dna of the city is that nature aspect also it's known as the maker city because you know that craft scene is so huge as a part of Knoxville, you know, downtown, you'll see there's tons of little boutiques, pop-up shops. They do a uh, art crawl on the first Friday of every month when people come out and display all that they're working on. You know, the students can bring over their projects. They're, they've uh, they've been working on all semester. Market Square is downtown. You should definitely Google map it. An awesome little square with like tons of little shops and eateries. I mean, the food down there, oh, oh, it's delicious. Delicious. You want to talk about food? I talk about food all day long. Lots of little places to eat down there. The Tennessee Theater, a classic, beautiful theater where, you know, not just like stage performances, but like bands will come, uh, Broadway shows. I think they even show like, you know, movies. They do movies out in the Market Square too. They, so much going on downtown. Like I said, it's like across the street from the university. So it makes the university even bigger. Talking about things about Knoxville, you also got to talk about the people who really kind of make it up, the businesses there. And people are surprised. Regal Cinemas, like the number two largest movie theater chain in the country, based out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Discovery, you know, HGTV, Food Network, Travel Channel, based out of Knoxville. So if you're watching show, like, man, that's a really cute house that they're fixing up. Where is that? Knoxville. Altered State, I don't know if anybody's been shopping there, but they got some of the nicest clothes. Altered State, based out of Knoxville. Mastercraft. Sea Ray, you know, your ski dudes where you're ripping it on the Tennessee River, you get it fresh out the factory. Um, I'd like to jump down to the Pilot Corporation here, you know, the number two or maybe number one largest truck stop chain in the country. It's owned by the Haslams. They actually went to Tennessee. They're huge parts of the university. They also own the Cleveland Browns, so you'll see a lot of Tennessee uh, up there. And then Oak Ridge National Lab, that is where the atomic bomb was invented. The secret city. It's very close to Knoxville. Really cool aspects there where you know, people come from all over the world to work there because it has like one of the top three largest supercomputers in the world. Um, so engineers come from all over. So our students who are interested in engineering 
will go and work there at the Oak Ridge National Lab and work with these, you know, I feel like the word expert doesn't describe them well enough. Work with these people who are just the best in their field and really learn firsthand from them, which is just invaluable. So let's talk about applying to the university. We've talked about the university, we've talked about Knoxville. Now let's say, hey, I wanna join this tradition. How do I get started? Well, you become a VIP, a vol in progress. And you do that on our website, apply.utk.edu. Take you right there to fill it out. We also accept the Common App. Honestly, we don't care which one you want to do. Whatever's easier for you is easier for us. Big change this year, though. We are now a test optional school. If you do not want to submit your test scores to the University of Tennessee, you do not have to. There is no punishment for it. It is honestly completely up to you. We do not judge you differently than if you submitted test scores. And the I'll even show you the application process here almost exactly the same. You submit an online application and then you will complete your self-reported academic record, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. There's a $50 uh, application fee and then you write one essay and you have seven different prompts and you, you know, just write beautifully for us, for us to read. And then this is where they diverge. Then you either upload your test scores or then you do a test optional essay. So you write another essay which I'll even give you the prompt for here in a second. And that's it. That's the only differences between the two application routes. And like we said, we don't care. If you don't want to do your test scores, don't do your test scores. Come test optional. It is absolutely, completely acceptable to go that route. There's scholarships for that route. So don't freak out. Be like, oh my gosh, I got to do my test scores. You also see here at the bottom, these optional items. I think they're great to do. Letters of recommendation. We're going to read through all of those and really see, make sure you get them from, you know, your employer, from your teachers, from your counselors, from your, you know, if you go to church, people in your church, we always say, don't try to ask your grandmother to write one for you. We know your grandmother loves you. We think she's incredibly biased though. So we're not gonna really pay too much attention to that. So get some more professional academic uh, letters of rec. A supporting statement is if there's any information you think we need to know, that's when you tell us. When we're looking at your transcript, when I'm reading about your, you know, your sophomore year, I don't have any background, I don't have any context. So that's what your supporting thing is about. Like maybe you, you blew out your knee and you just missed a lot of classes and your grades suffered, but you got right back on track and you, you, know, you, you finished strong. I don't get that information when I'm looking at your transcript, but your supporting statement does tell me that. It's another opportunity to give us information, another chance for you to really brag on yourself. I mentioned the test optional application right here. I'm giving you the prompt right out the gate. If you got a phone, take a picture of that bad boy. I'm gonna read it. We believe Vol is a verb and leadership is a willingness to act. Provide an example of how you've demonstrated leadership to make a positive impact in your community, family, work experience, school, community service of efforts, etc. And describe the impact of your efforts and why it was meaningful to you. That is your test optional application question. Write that essay, really talk about your leadership skills when times when you've been able to demonstrate them and don't leave out any details. We really wanna know about it. We value leadership so much that this is your chance to brag on yourself. The self-reported academic record, I mentioned this earlier. This is a new thing that we've added. Once you've completed your online application, you have two weeks, two weeks to complete your self-reported academic record. That is where you will go online and you're gonna upload your freshman year, sophomore year, and junior year transcripts for us. And then you gotta make sure it's perfect, no mistakes, because once you submit it, you can't go back and make changes. So make sure you double check it before you hit submit. I know this is like, oh my gosh, I gotta write an essay and I got all this to do, I gotta upload my transcripts. Why do they wanna know all this? Because what Tennessee does that very few other schools do is we do a holistic review of everything that you've done. That means we're going to read it all. I will read your application. I will read your transcript. I will read your essays, your letters of recommendations, your supporting statement. I'm going to read all of that. And then I'm either going to say approve or deny. And that's kind of what happens. And then it goes to another person who's going to read all of it again. And they're going to say approve or deny. And then it goes to a committee for them to approve. So this is what we mean that we're going to really dig in and get to know you as a student. So the more information you can give us, the better. But why the heck do we do all this? Why don't we just have an algorithm set up? Because we believe that there's more to you as a student than just what's on your transcript and what's on your test scores and all that stuff. All the things you're like, man, I'm, I wish they'd just give me a chance. They would see how good of a student I am. 
that's what this is for. Because maybe, you know, like I got a 3.0. I know the average at Tennessee is like a 3.6. I don't think they want a 3.0 person. Oh man, I only got like a, like a 26 on my ACT. All my friends got a 36, you know, something crazy. Like they're not going to want me. And, but you're, you do all the volunteer work on the side. You do all the leadership opportunities. You know, you're out helping with Habitats for Humanity on your spring break. I want to know that. You're out there doing leadership. You're forming groups. You're really making a change in your community. I want to know that. Because when I read that, when I see that volunteer spirit, when I see that you're living our, you know, like our code, then I'm going to be like, yeah, that's the student we want there. I don't care they have a 3.0. They are demonstrating the volunteer spirit, and that's what we look for when we do the holistic review. I'm going to get off my soapbox there. Talk a little bit about our core weighted GPA system. So when you upload your transcript, we're going to look at everything and we're going to throw a bunch of it out. And all we're going to care about are these subjects listed here. English, math, science, American history, European history, world history, world geography, single foreign language, and visual or performing arts. That's what we look at. And we're only going to accept the maximum amount of the units listed to the left. So maybe you took like seven units of math. We're only going to take your top four. And then we're going to calculate a new GPA and that becomes your core weighted GPA for the University of Tennessee. And that's what we care about more than anything. And why do we call it the core weighted GPA? Well, these are core courses and then we weight them differently. If you're just taking regular classes, it comes in like a normal weighted class. But if you take honors, we give you a half point weight. If they're AP, IP, Cambridge, dual enrollment courses, if you're taking college courses in high school, we're going to give you a full point bump in the weight system. So that's what we can do. We want to reward you for challenging yourself and making, you know, the effort to be a better student. We want to reward that, not punish you for doing, you know, a college course and only getting a B. We're going to actually give you that nod. So that's the core weight GPA. These are some important dates here. And this is essentially like, hey, when am I going to know if I got accepted to the school or not? These are your dates right here. If you apply uh, in, as an early action student, you will find out in mid-December. If you apply before the regular deadline, you'll find out in mid-February. And you'll, like I told you, you'll find out if you've been admitted, if you've been denied, if you need to be deferred, and then road to Rocky Top, which is where we believe you'll be a great addition to the university, but you're just not quite ready for it yet. So we're gonna have you come down, you're gonna live on campus, you're gonna eat our food, you're gonna do everything a normal volunteer would do, except your courses are gonna be at a local community college that we have a system set up with. And then your next year, you come right on in as a volunteer student. That's our road to Rocky Top system. Other important dates you see here, I mentioned before that early action admission application deadline is November 2nd. So if you guys all complete your application by November 2nd, you will find out in mid-December if you've been accepted. It's also required if you want to be, uh, you know, considered for any competitive scholarships. If you want to join scholars or honor programs, you need to apply before November 2nd. The regular admission deadline, December 15th. You apply before, like after November 2nd, before December 15th, you find out in the middle of February if you've been accepted or not. FAFSA dates, we all know that goes live October 1st. There's our code 003530. Our priority deadline is February 1st. So right before Groundhog's Day, make sure you have us on FAFSA. And then May 1st is your confirmation deadline. That is where if you want to be a volunteer, we need to know by May 1st. And that's the probably the most important deadline of all is if you're gonna come on down and join the family. Let's talk about value because we're actually rated as one, I think in the top 10% of value when it comes to the amount of investment you're making in yourself and the quality of the degree you get. So here's our estimated tuition, room and board, all of this. Unfortunately, we all gotta look on the same side of the screen under out of state students. We're not Tennessee residents. So for out of state students, your tuition fees $31,684. These are per year, not per semester, so don't freak out. $11,856 for room and board, so it comes out to that total of $43,540 for the entire year. Now, this is before any grants, before any scholarships, and that's where your real value kicks in. Down at the bottom, you see the out-of-state students. Now, these are all based on a 3.8 core weighted GPA, and these are the scales. And the first ones I'm going to talk about are the people who submit test scores. So you see down there, if you have a 3.8, and at 28 to 29 on your ACT, $10,000 a year, 40,000 total. If you have a 30 to a 33 on the ACT, 15,000 a year, 60,000 total. And finally, 34 to 36, what we're all getting, 36, right? That's how we roll, $18,000 a year, $72,000 total. That is our volunteer scholarship. We also have another branch 
uh, scholarships too that these can be for a 3.6 core weighted GPA or a 24 on the ACT and there's different tiers here and you'll see the amounts on the side of what's awarded. It goes from 4,000 all the way up to $7,500 a year. The Tennessee Explorer Scholarship and the Volunteer Scholarships do not stack. You get one or the other. They will stack with other scholarships. So if you're coming in with some third party scholarships, um, they will work together with those, but they won't work together with each other. So just keep that in mind, you get one or the other when it comes to those scholarships. Now we have something called the Beacon Scholarship, and this is uh, specifically for my test optional folks. And this is where essentially we're gonna do your holistic review and we wanna see, you know, right there, based on your outstanding academic achievement, extracurricular engagement, demonstrated leadership and commitment to your communities. You blow us away and those aspects on your, you know, in your essays, on your application, in your personal statements and all of that, then we're gonna award you scholarship money and that's anywhere between four to 18,000. So the exact same scholarship range as people who are doing test scores. Like I said, it does not affect you whatsoever if you go test optional. I know people think that and they're like, no, they really want test scores. Not the case, I cannot stress that enough. It does not affect you to go test optional. That being said, I'm gonna give you guys some advice. If you are at all on the fence about your test scores, or if you're just not sure if you should submit them or not, please go test optional. Because if you do somehow take, get another ACT schedule, you know, like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I'd get another chance to take the test. And I did great, I wish they knew. You can upload your test scores at a later date. It doesn't work the other way. If you come in with your test score submitted, you cannot go test optional once we've already submitted your test scores. You know, we already have them in the database. We can't just remove them and act like they don't exist. So I always tell people, if you're at all worried, if you're on the fence, if you have any concerns about it, start test optional. And you stay test optional if you want to. Like I said, people think it hurts them. It does not. It is designed to be this way. I mentioned before about coming down and checking out the campus. I 100% believe that we have the best on-campus visit program in the nation. It is absolutely phenomenal what they have for you, the way they get to know you, the way they take you around, they personalize the experience for everybody. They do, no, I don't even wanna spoil it. I don't even spoil the surprises that they do. It is amazing and we're doing campus visits again. We just started firing them up just a couple weeks ago and you can book one, you can bring, you bring a friend with you, bring your mom, your dad, Gigi, Pop Pop, your weird aunt and uncle, bring them all. Bring them all through. We're gonna have a great time. Show you all the way around the campus. Really make a memorable experience for you. We have tons of virtual experiences online as well too. You can sit in on information sessions. You can do virtual tours. You can even book a chance to do a one-on-one -on -one chat with current students of the university, like people who are in your major. Like I wish I could talk to somebody in the School of Music about like, you know, what the course load is like and you know, if they really, enjoy it you can do that that's like a cool thing you do so you can do like full campus tours from your couch man i mean that's 2020 we're doing everything from our couch but that's something you can continue to do so it's awesome and then maybe you do that first then you just roll into the real visit down especially in fall when it's beautiful outside you know the orange of the leaves matches the orange of the university can't be topped last slide here my information. So I'm the official counselor for the state of Ohio, like I mentioned before. If you have a question about anything, I cannot encourage you enough to call me, text me, email me. I'm literally paid a salary to make your life easier because all of you have the same three big questions. One, am I going to school? Two, where the heck am I going? And what am I going to study when I get there? If I can help you with any one of those three, hopefully all three, then I've done my job. I love to do this. I love to work with students. It, this is a passion of mine, higher education. So please, please utilize me as a resource. I'm more than comfortable with that. That being said, that's all I've got presentation wise. I don't see any questions being written over here. I can hang back for a little bit. If you guys want to see a certain slide again, if you have any specific questions, I'll answer it because we still got a little bit of time. I think we have upwards of 15 minutes. Um, so feel free to write any questions that you may have. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for the time being. I'm going to turn it over to you all to see what you want to know. There we go. Look at that. I forgot to ask, but can we bring cars on campus and do have to stay on campus during the first year? So I think I just say answer live. There we go. Cool. So yes, you can have cars. Your freshman year, you can absolutely have a car on campus um, and you do live on campus your freshman year. That is like the one, you know, requirement that we have is your freshman year, you live on campus. 
But as soon as your sophomore year, you can move off if you want to. But your freshman year, you're on campus and you can have a car. A lot of our students, you know, they'll come and say, like, look, I'm just doing one year on campus and I'm going to get an apartment with people. And then they end up staying for like two, maybe even three years. Some stay the whole time because um, it's just fantastic locations. Good question. Good question. Thank you for the for the alley-oop. I wish I had background music to play right now. Oh, I know. Hey, Google, play Rocky Top. Let's see if this works. All right. Here's Osborne Brothers, Rocky Top on YouTube Music. Please type if it's painfully awful sounding. The song we're going to do right now was released on Christmas Day, 67, originally. It's written by Google and Felice Bryan about a beautiful spot just out of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And on February the 15th, 1982, this song was voted by the General Assembly of Tennessee as one of their official state songs and we were very fortunate to be the first group to have the first record on this and since then it's been recorded over a hundred i know you guys can hear it and we look back on dear old rocky top <laughs> can't beat this song ain't nobody got a song better than this It is 5.32 right now. We have this room to 5.45, but we'll say if, if you guys don't have any questions in the next few minutes, we'll just go ahead and wrap everything up. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Will. I just wanted to jump on here and tell everybody thank you for joining us today for the presentation from Will with the University of Tennessee. Um, there will be a quick survey after you close this window. It's about four questions long. Make sure you sign up for more sessions presented by the OACAC. And you can find those at oacac.org. And again, this was recorded and will be available in about a week at the same website, oacac.org. Thanks so much, Will. Great seeing you again. Bye, guys.